My name's Richard Wright. Um, I'm the owner of this um, thatching business. We've got a son in it and a grandson and a lad that's been working for me 31 years. And we can trace our family back to 1781 in the church register as Satchers here in Summerton and local village. In terms of when you actually go up on the roof, and uh, and this kind of a sunny because you're actually on the roof. Do you have any harnesses, or is there any sort of health no. and safety? No, once you once you mat there, you you can't really because you're moving about every every minute. You're moving, you you're moving your ladder a bit, and so you know there's nothing you can fix. You're just out there. Lucky enough, now we got scaffolding. You know, a few years ago that come in as a law, um, which is good for us because we haven't got the big heavy ladders. In Dad's time, I mean, it was all done from a ladder. And I can remember one job in, in our village at Compton Dundon, and the ladder did go right across the road. And when, when anything came, he had to get down and lift the ladder up so it could go in underneath. You know, in their days, there wasn't much traffic, you know, so it was all right, but you couldn't do that today. And do, do you remember going out with your dad then doing it? Yeah, oh yeah. Well, it was that like, how old were you when you started? Um, well, I, I didn't start, I was probably about 18 when I started thatching. I didn't go straight away um, from school. I thought I would go into farming, in, uh, so I didn't go with dad. And then his brother, his brother had a, big, a fall off of a roof and was injured. And Dad was short, you know, he wanted some help. And um, so I decided to go on with him. And I didn't go long with him, um, two or three years, and then I went on my own. I started up my own business about when I was about 22, 21, 22. How did your dad feel about that, you setting up well, your own? he didn't really mind, because my brother was just about to leave school then. So my brother went on with him, thatching. And I went on my own. Yeah, Dad didn't mind a bit. That's what I wanted to do. What, what made you want to do farming first? Did the thatching not appear? Well, I always, as a, a kid from about 10 year old, I used to go on the neighbouring farm, helping the farmer, and I always had animals of my own. Even at 12 year old, I had calves and pigs, and so I, I would animal mad. But then I got into the thatching and that was fine. I could do both then. I could go thatching and still keep me animals, and still do now. Yeah. Got, got 40 head of beef cattle here. You, you would never move to, you've never been tempted to move to a city then, you're a country person. Then. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine myself even in a coldy sack here in summer, and <laughs> I'm just out in the open, and yeah. yeah. And also, earlier you were talking about um, like the listed buildings being thatched. Um, what, like, what, what kind of listed buildings have you done? Are there any kind of big ones? or? Yeah, most of them. Nearly all our work is, involves listed buildings. So you can't change the material. If, especially the last um, 15 years, if uh, there's three sorts of material, there's long straw, there's combed wheat reed, and there's water reed. Well, the water reed originally came from the Norfolk Broads. You, you had the, um, and then they started using it down here. But then they, they made this l ruling on listed buildings. If it was a comb wheat reed, you don't get any long straw thatch in Somerset. That's mostly Wiltshire and further up. So what's a long straw? Well, it's, it's a variety of wheat, the same as the comb wheat reed, but it's not gone through a reed comber, a machine, to clean out all the rubbish, and you've got the long, um, straight stems for thatching. Long straw is just, it comes out of the back of the machine, just literally as straw, and you've got to yelm it out, and you put it on the roof completely different. What, what does yell mean? Well, you just, you straighten it out yourself. A lot of, there's a lot of work with long straw to be done before you put it on the roof. Whereas with comb wheat reed, once it comes out the machine, it's ready to go on the roof. But um, what I was going to say is, with the listed building, especially in Somerset, if 
if it's got water read on there, the council will allow the customer to change it to comb wheat read. But if it's comb wheat read and he wants to put water read, he isn't allowed. But they will the other way to go back, get it back how it should have been like 50 years ago. Yeah, so there's, there's a bit of rules on what yeah, you're allowed to do. Yeah, which is good because there is some properties in Somerset, if you put water read on them, it would take all the character away from it. It, it didn't go, it didn't look the same. Oh, that's interesting you say about character because I mean, like most people, when they look at thatched houses, they, I mean, they think of kind of the countryside and kind of like a quaint house and all that. And it's, um, I mean, what do you think the, the appeal is to a thatched house? Um, I don't know. I suppose it's it's towns people. I think that like the idea of living in a thatched cottage. Um, I don't know how many years ago. Um, they, there was a firm in Devon that made a imitation thatch. It was fiberglass sheets. Um, all right, it was better in corrugated tin, but it was a fiberglass and you, it was only a thin mold and you screwed it to the battens of the house. Well, it didn't last long. It didn't take off even. I, I don't know of very many. I know of one that was done locally, but it, it soon came off again. Um, but it didn't take off. The reason was, if people wanted a thatched house, they wanted a thatched house. They didn't want no imitation. So that's why it didn't take off. So they get you in as the real deal. Instead. So they want, yeah, proper thatch, like. Yeah, and you were saying it takes quite a while. I mean, I bet in the summer it's quite nice being up on a roof. Yeah, low, yeah, lovely. It's hard in the winter, mine. It's, you know, it can be cold and wet. But, I mean, if you, providing you don't get wet yourself, you know, and you, you, you keep working, you, you keep hot anyway. You've got to work to keep hot. Yeah. You do just as much. The boys would say they would do just as much work between end of September and May as they do from May till September. Because it can be too hot sometimes in the summer, so you're inclined to be down up with a drink board. In, well, not more, but you know what I mean. It gets too hot. Do you, do you ever sit up and have like a, your lunch on the roof? No, not, not very often, no. Hey. No. You come down. Um, no, they, they just come down and sit in the truck for 20 minutes, half hour, after lunch. And what's it actually like, because being up on the roof, because like, is the material quite slippy? Like, what's it actually like? Yeah, if you get hot sun, it, uh, uh, but then you've got to, if it's too hot and dry, you've got to just damp the material a bit. Not, not soak it, but just damp it a bit, stop it from slipping away like from me. Well, you're actually using it. Yeah. Once it's pegged on the roof, it's fine. And do you, do you get many accidents? Touch wood, Josh, no. No, it's just common sense more than anything. It's, it's really common sense making sure that if you, your, your scaffold in nowadays is put up right, um, your, your ladder is good, no broken rungs or anything like that. It's really common sense more than anything. Yeah. And in terms of like thatching maintenance, like how how regularly do you have to sit, go to a roof? Is well, if you if you re say we just thatched a house now, he should be he should be all right for ten or twelve years, and then he would need a new ridge, a new top. So you put a new ridge on it. And then he should go another 12 year. Because we, uh, or we always say uh, a house uh, take two ridges and then you need thatching again. Like you, you, you thatch it, you would ridge it then after 12 years, say. Some would even go longer. But if you say 10, 12 years. And then the next time it wants doing, it probably wants re-thatching. You'd have to see the condition of it. Or you could re-ridge it again and it would take it on another four or five years. Yeah. Depends where the cottage is or where the house is, where it lasts as well. 
if it's high and dry and the wind can blow and it's, it'll last longer, but if it's amongst trees, it won't last so long. And it's um, like, because of the material it's made of, do you get animals living in it? Very rare. Birds, if you, if you get a bird problem, but then most places put wire netting, like a thin wire mesh over it to keep the birds out. But it's only birds. You wouldn't get or shouldn't get any more insects and that up in the loft of a thatched house than you do um, anything else. I mean, you'll get spiders and things up in tiled roofs. So, but no, you shouldn't get no vermin or nothing like that. If the if the reed is thrashed out, because when this when the sheaves of corn go through my machine, all the grains taken out. So providing all that's taken now, if there was a lot of grain left in it, and put on the roof, then you could get a problem with uh, mice or rats. Yeah, and because uh, like, just in your place, you haven't got a thatched roof. Is that a <laughs> Is that a bit hypocritical? No, we just wouldn't have time to do it. <laughs> if we had one, <laughs> we'd be too busy all the time. I thought it'd feel like a lot of effort thatching your own yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah, it, it would. I, it doesn't put me. I mean, I, I love thatched houses, and, and it, if I ended up in a thatched house, it'd be fine. But um, just just all my life, I've, you know, haven't, haven't, that haven't happened. And well, how it must be quite tiring, like the work. Like, what's it like when you get home at the end of the day? Do you yeah, know? yeah, it is. If if you've been up and down the ladder all day, um, yeah, you just well, it just depends how fit you are. It keeps you fit, mine. Until my knees, through four year ago, um, I I could keep up with the boys. Like you keep me fit, but if it just slowed me up now, I I can't um, believe how. This have really slowed me up. But then people say I'm getting older, so. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, you're looking pretty well. Yeah. Um, but like in terms of like fitness, like I suppose you're climbing the ladder, you lugging bits. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, it's yeah. Kind of all over body workout. Yeah. It's it, it is um it key, and you need to be fit to go up and down like you you know I mean I'm 64 this year so. Um, unfortunately, I put on a bit of weight that I I got to get rid of, and that would have helped. Um, but if you're, you know, when I was thatching, I, I I did run about the roof, yeah, right up to four or five years ago, I could run and keep up with the boys and do anything. It's just my knees has just hit me all of a sudden, which I didn't expect, but. And this, um, do you ever get people who come and like maybe help out or want to do an apprenticeship and they, they can't keep up with you lot? Um, we, we have in the past had, um, uh, Dad had apprentices back in his day. Um, uh, three Dad trained. Um, n neither one of them is Thatchers now. They went on thatching um, and they, they was good Thatchers, but one of them, when his dad lost his dad, he took on his uh, fruit and veg business. Um, I don't know what one of them's doing. In the, the first one he took on, he went to France and thatching out there. Uh, now he sends back um, reclamation material. So I don't think he's doing much thatching out there, but he was a good thatcher, that one. Yeah. And but so, I've never put anybody, I've never, I tried to keep it in the family, like if I can. So what's the, the characteristics of a good thatcher then? What would you need to be able to do? Um, well, you've, you've, got to have a, you, you've got to have a good eye and you've got to like working with natural products like, because it's, um, you, can't go in a, you can't go in a store and buy any, any of our material. It's all grown in the field or cut in the, on the trees, the willow trees. For, for the for the sticks to make the pattern ridge, you've got to be, and you've got to have a good eye, really, because everything's done by eye. No, nothing's done with a, a t ruler or a level or nothing. It's just more or less by eye. Yeah. Do you have to be a bit of a perfectionist then? You really want to, yeah. To to, I mean, yeah. Your your attitude got to be, you know, you. People look at it. You want to look at it and think, "Well, that's a nice job. I'm pleased with that." 
you, you've got to have that sort of attitude. Do you, do you ever drive past houses that have been thatched that you haven't done and think, oh, that's a bit of a scrappy job? Yeah, but you also drive past some that is good jobs. Like, you know, you think, well, they lads made a damn good job of that. Yeah. I think most thatchers, <clears throat> most thatchers around here, you know, you could recommend to anybody. And is it competitive around here, getting the work? No, I think everybody got work. I think, um, yeah, no. Um, well, I'm the sort of guy to get on with anybody. Uh, most thatchers keep themselves to themselves. <laughs> it's probably only me that is. I mean, I'll, I'll help any. I used to supply a lot of reed every thatcher, say. They would cut, because I did grow reed. I supplied most thatchers in Somerset. Devon, I supplied reed for them. So I get on, and it doesn't worry me. But you do get some thatchers that keep themselves to themselves and won't say too much if you meet them. They, they wouldn't talk much, like, whereas I'm completely different, I think. I'm more, more open. In, um, I suppose because we've been in business so long, um, we've always had so much work that it, it doesn't matter to me. You know, it doesn't matter to me. Like, you know, if we get work, we get it. If we don't, we don't. Whereas perhaps a younger generation of Thatchers now is perhaps got to fight for their work. I don't say fight for their work, but n need work to come their way perhaps more than I have in my 40 years. And because you mentioned that your uh, your dad passed away quite recently, yeah, is, is that kind of changed the way that the business is run? No, not at all. No, he he because he was nothing to do with me anyway. He 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 kept going right up till um, he made our spars because we use a lot of like the wooden pegs to do the rigging. Well, in the winter he would he wouldn't make enough for us, but he would sit down in his greenhouse and make about 20,000 through the winter. He'd call that his um, backy money or whiskey money because he lived till, he would have been, he died in February and he would have been 90 in May and he never took a tablet, never took a tablet. He, just whiskey. Just whiskey, <laughs> whiskey and fags. Oh, right. well, that, that proves the science. And he never, wrong. never took a tablet till six months before he died. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is the thatching that kept him fit. Yeah, oh, you were fit, mine. He was a fit chap, yeah. He was he was thin and slim and, yeah. But has it changed the business in terms of, um, for you, like the fact that you're kind of, you're ahead of it now? Um, well, no, I don't think I've changed it at all, really. Um, yeah, Dad's not there, um, but life goes on and um, we get on um yeah i suppose he w he was always keen although he wasn't in business the last 20 year or more but he'd always come about with me looking to see where the boys were working and so yeah he missed going about and we missed taking in about i suppose yeah mm. and so like are you kind of um who is it? It's Andrew and... Andrew, my son, yeah. And Sean. Sean, grandson. Yeah, so it's those two. Uh, those two. And then Adrian, uh, a chap, and he'd been on. Adrian left school and he came on working for me 31 years ago last month. Wow. And uh, we've never had a crossword. Yeah. Yeah. Marvellous kid. Well, what's it like having a family business, though? Does it mean that you're talking about work over the dinner table and all that? Or... Um... Yeah, I suppose. Um, yeah, we we. I've, although I run the job, we've never ever had a boss worker relationship. It's always us, and uh, I think that's worked because they know what they got to do, and they get on with it. I don't have to be telling them what to do. They know what they got, and I think that's you know that's been a good. Um, we've always had that sort of relationship. If I, if I weren't about for six months, it would go on just the same. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then, I guess just my final question is, um, just kind of, uh, where do you think it's all going in the future? Then, 
in terms of collection? Is it an in, is it an industry that's going to die out, or is it going to kind of go on? Well, it can, it can't die out really. It it can't really die out because when that roof, all the thatch properties in Somerset, most of them, Devon, Dorset, when they need to be rethatched again, they got to be rethatched. They can't say, well, we'll take that off and put slates on or tiles on. It got to be put back thatch. So somebody's got to do it. So if Andrew and Sean, I know Adrian's getting older now, but um, they they should shouldn't have any fear of where they're going to work next, like. 